hello again. So we're ready to return the Orion capsule back to Earth. All right, so we've abandoned the Altair. We're done with the upper stage. So we need to set up a node to head back. So just from having done this way too many times, I know that the node will be around where we are now, actually. So I'll just set it for, oops, I'll set it uh, for the next time around. Darn, no. Just add maneuver. Because it would be pretty obvious once we get out that way. So, you know, you want to head in this direction. Um, because once we leave the sphere of influence, that'll have us going slower than the moon is in its orbit, which you know will give us a node back this way. And I'll do a, little, a couple of tweaks to it because you know, we want to we want to fine tune it. So let's see. We want to get it down to. So this is you know I've been playing a little bit of stockish play recently, so it's a lot easier to say return from from the moon or. Uh, other bodies there. So, but this is I need to fine tune it a, a great deal more. So I want to hit um, about 55 kilometers, uh, and that's pretty tight from this. But I can do a course correction once I leave the moon's uh, sphere of influence. All right, so that's close enough. So I will set up that node, and I might even be able to allow it to be carried out automatically. I mean, I'll program it, but just the way that Mechchep was behaving with uh, with the Altair. I'd, don't expect it to necessarily do it uh, well itself. But that's okay. It's carried out most of this mission for me anyway. So execute next node. Let it get there. There we go. And that'll be the last time that we see the, uh, the Altair upper stage. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do another once around of the moon. So let's see, where will the Earth be from our perspective? Is it just coming around? Yep, there it is. So in the last video, you might have noticed I had about two, three hundred less megabytes of uh, RAM used, or if not, no biggie. Um, but I had, um, just to let me do a couple more reverts, I had um, removed RVE, the clouds and everything, to uh, give myself a little, more, a little more memory room for a couple of reverts in case errors happened. And of course, oh, errors did happen. Some of them were still in that previous video and the, the one before that. All right, so it's going to be a long burn, it looks like. Even in the, the moon's sphere of influence, the thrust-to-weight ratio of this, the Orion um, service module engine just isn't, uh, isn't very potent. Um, let's see, abort node. Oh, it's doing something. Didn't activate the engine, though, so I'll just do that manually. I turned on the RCS. <laughs> All right. So let's see. So what's the uh, G-force? Yeah, pretty, uh, pretty anemic engine. Oh, and, but you can see the uh, yeah we've got a real plume. I put a real plume on this. It's one of the more recent ones I did uh, before recording this series. And it looks like the lifetime of the particles isn't long enough that you can see them at time warp. But you know whatever. So I'll kill the RCS because it should be able to gimbal and correct that itself. I think. Eh, if not, no biggie. Let's let the RCS fix it. I don't remember how much gimbal this engine has. Maybe it just has a really small amount. That might be the trick why it was having a bit of trouble. Uh, let it stabilize a bit again and then head up to time warp. Yeah, beyond that, we just uh, will be doing a re entry using the uh, re entry mode. So let's see, where is that? Da, 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 da. I'm pretty sure we've got that set up on here. Descent mode, right. Turn descent mode on. So, what descent mode uh, will do? is shift the center of mass in the craft. Now, um, my understanding is that these, in the older craft, like you know, Gemini and Apollo, the center of mass was just always off-center. Um, of course, in some more modern vehicles, they have, a, they have a weight or you know, stuff that they can shift around to change the center of mass. But just, you know, for, it's kind of a compromise in real solar system for uh, practical control. So it's just so much easier to control RCS and everything when your center of mass is right down the center line, of course. And so we just have, um, we, we borrowed it from some other mod when it um, kind of fell out of support, the, the feature to change the center of mass using a control in here. So having the center of mass off center uh, allows the craft to generate lift, which is extremely important, particularly when you're returning from um, speeds like this from the moon or from even beyond, uh, <coughs> beyond uh, the moon's distance. 
back up to time warp. So by generating lift, we don't have to, um, let's say we couldn't, right? So it's, that would be called a ballistic trajectory. So I'd have to hit a point in the atmosphere where we're low enough that without you know, being able to generate lift or drag or anything, any, anything additional other than the regular, um, we would have to hit a point where we'd bleed off enough speed on the way down that we wouldn't head back up and uh, pass you know, back out of the atmosphere. So with this, I can, uh, by rotating the roll of the spacecraft, we can, sorry, it's just wobbling on me like that. There we go. So uh, by controlling the roll position, uh, so with respect to you know, down the center line where the center of mass offset is, uh, we can either angle the craft so that it generates uh, kind of a down force with its lift or, or you know, an up, up force with the lift. And I, you can use that to great effect with a lot of the, the craft that are configured in realism overhaul. You know, Gemini's, um, Apollo's, and the Altair, or the, um, the Orion. All right, burn is nearly done and should shut itself off. But if it doesn't, I'm ready on the trigger. Abort, yeah, so it's still, it's still auto-executing. There we go. So let's see where it put us. Um, yeah, close enough. Uh, actually, I might be able to just correct that using RCS, actually. There we go. That's, and that'll be pretty close. 55-ish uh, is what I usually aim for. See, even with, if you're not coming from here, like let's say you're returning Gemini from low Earth orbit or Apollo from low Earth orbit, the ability to control, uh, to generate that lift is, is extremely useful because you can reduce the amount of g-force your um, your crew and the hardware has to undergo, you know, which is kind of a convenience feature for the astronauts because you know they'll do whatever you pay them to do. So it won't kill them or injure them, but uh, it's pretty good for the engineering of the hardware as well because you can manipulate the peak uh, heating loads, a lot of other factors. All right, so I want to get a bit closer. Let's see, 53, that's good enough. So I'll just do a quick save there and then warp a bit closer. Let's see, where is the Earth? Actually, before I warp, I should probably have the Earth in the window. Where, there we go. All right, and will it hold the position? Yes, it will. All right, so let's warp in closer. So judging by the fact that we're seeing the full sunlit side of the Earth here, we might be uh, re-entering on the dark side. Which is another thing I just haven't quite figured out. Because I'd like to you know, do all my launches and landings on the bright side. And I'm pretty sure historically they did all their uh, landings during the day of the you know, Apollo returns from the moon. But I haven't quite figured out the mechanics of that. I'm sure it, it probably mostly has to do with when you launch, like when, you know, where, what time of day it is on the point of the Earth that you're launching from with respect to the moon and things. But I just haven't entirely worked that out. It's okay. Thankfully, in the game, landing in uh, the dark isn't so bad. So the moon's kind of the uh, the clouds kind of twinkle like that because we're so far away. Oh, what's going on? Seems like it took a brief freeze. Maybe I'm changing. Uh, oh, there we go. It's doing something. Look like scat. Oh, I got close enough for a scatter to kick in. Look like it kicked in a little. All uh, oh, these settings must have reset. There we go. Set. There makes it look a little less crazy. Save that. I'm sure I had some of these other ones tweaked as well, because it looks like the atmosphere is pretty intense. That's what that pause was. That was scatter kicking in. All right. So uh, we are, you know, with the, that current point, we are a little over an hour away from closest point of approach. So get a little closer again. All right, so what I usually do to set myself up at this point out, uh, oh, no, that isn't fixed. Okay, I can fix that. Let's see, 365, I think I've got that number roughly remembered. Yeah, the atmosphere from this window was not scaled. I'm not sure if you can set that in the config. That might, might be why it was off. All right, so I usually say pick a point near that and then you know, say I want to be pointed you know, retrograde to that and use that as my point of reference to orient the craft for re-entry. And you approach the atmosphere pretty uh, pretty quick at this distance. Oh man, the Earth looks really good. 
So you approach the uh, you approach pretty quick at this um, yeah, because we're coming from the moon. Yeah, we get a lot of speed. I'll just take take a moment to to view it like this. So I can watch that timer for as we get closer. So let's see. I'm sure I've got an option. Yeah. So vertical speed. So that's how much altitude we're losing all the time which is a not insubstantial amount. And that'll decrease as we approach, but we don't want to uh, have it force us out of time warp when we hit the atmosphere because we want to drop this service module. Okay, there we go. So, see, we're still dropping, so three kilometers a second. We've got, let's say, three, uh, three, four hundred seconds until we actually hit the atmosphere. So, it's not the worst time to, uh, to orient ourselves. Let's see. Usually, I don't. Uh, I haven't checked how the center of mass offset is, but I usually, uh, when I set those up for the realism overhaul files for the FAS uh, Gemini and Apollo, I set it up so that the windows can be used as a reference. So I'll have to check if that's how these are set because I've forgotten. So I'll set it to the side so it's neutral. So if you know the windows were all the way up or down, it would be generating lift directly up or down. Uh, in this orientation, it should be generating lift to the left or right instead. And then I can change that by rotating the capsule. So things I should do before we hit the atmosphere, make sure we still know <laughs> we don't have uh, these resources. We definitely want to transfer some in because these are the fuels that we'll be using the hypergolics to you know, control our uh, roll position on the way in. Need to make sure the command module has some of that. There we go. Glad I checked that. All right, so probably a good time to drop the service module now. So I can just do that by staging, I believe. That's the one staging action that a SSTU has connected to the uh, to the command capsule here. Oh, it's moving away pretty slow, so we haven't set up too much thrust for that. But if I just push to the side or something like this, that should kind of get it away from being in front of us pretty quickly. There we go. Because we don't want it having different aerodynamics when we hit the atmosphere and you know, starting to push on us and force our orientation around or crazy things like that. So you can see we're increasing in speed. You usually, I find that in, in experience that's the case. You hit the atmosphere at about ten and a half kilometers a second uh, returning from the moon. I think um, coming back from Mars um, it's supposed to be around 11, 11.5 maybe, similar. So but keep in mind the energy is proportional to the square of that velocity, so it's that's that is still a pretty substantial amount of an increase, and it you know drastically changes because uh, you still have about the same amount of time, even less, um, when coming back from Mars to dissipate that energy in the atmosphere. So it's still really tricky. Okay, so yeah, we're starting to get some dynamic pressure. Let me move the. Um, I won't turn descent mode on yet until we hit maybe a couple hundred, you know. KPA um, until we've got more. I usually use the g-forces as a measure, so maybe a quarter of a g or something like that. It's a bit more finicky when you're entering from low Earth orbit because it kind of causes you to wobble and oscillate. There we go all right. So now the numbers I'll be watching for this are what is my periapsis. So you can see we're wobbled off. So good, it looks like the windows are set up. So if I aim this way, you can see that's going to start increasing due to the lift I'm generating. And I can pull some numbers from far. It'll tell you what my lift to drag ratio is if you're an airplane guy and that means something to you. It's about a, you know, about a quarter of a unit uh, lift to drag. So right now I'm going to try to bring this up. See, I usually hit go for a lower number because it gives you a bit more bite. See, we're hitting pretty good g-force and as this vertical speed, as I approach that actual position and this comes down, I want to use my lift to pull me down more. Because I don't want to use that lift to bounce off the atmosphere even harder than I would if I was in a ballistic trajectory. So if I stayed like this it would be like if I, I wouldn't, I'm not getting any upwards or downwards uh, advantage from the lift drag ratio. So I want to go down a little bit and I use uh, that to manage the g-forces. So ablator is bleeding off. And that's another reason, um, in part, you want to you, you know, uh, do this deceleration lower in the atmosphere. Uh, it's because you get you lose less ablator at that point. You get more g-forces, but lose less ablator. OK, 
Okay, so we're heading down. This so might be a little too aggressive. You can see the G-forces are getting really high there. Actually, around where they are, I th I'm thinking the Apollo, it was about 6 to 7 Gs, but definitely overshooting that now. So. so even now, see, I've just hit the point where I'm below 7.6 um, kilometers per second. So I've just now bled off enough energy that if I were to bounce up, I'd still come back in, in one orbit. You know, I no longer have uh, enough velocity to be in orbit. So G-force is starting to come down. I'm still heading down. So those are the key numbers I watch during this. And if, you know, if the craft was designed and set up right, I shouldn't run out of ablative shielding. So it all looks like it's going well. So I can probably do a bounce now. Um, that w that's what Apollo did uh, historically. It would, you know, take off a ton of en uh, energy in that, in the hit like we just did. Hit the atmosphere really hard, and see now we're we're bounced off. We're generating maximum up uh, up force, and actually starting to head back up using that energy. So just turn off that far data. Now hopefully you've seen everything you needed to see, or you know where to look for it yourself. And see even just the time to AP is increasing a bit here. So I find it's a bit too easy to over um, overshoot that to like bounce yourself up, so it's going to take you like a minute to come back down. Oh, and I even landed in an ocean. I definitely do not all, uh, always do that as well. Um, Trajectories is a good mod for that, but I don't have that installed right now. Um, but it's a really good mod for from a distance, letting you know you know what what uh, rotation position the uh, the Earth will be in when you come back, and as a result, you know, what point on the surface you're going to be coming back to. And you can adjust that with fine-tune adjustments. One thing that Trajectories doesn't do is, you know, because my craft isn't actually like this out there, it's estimating my drag with the service module. And as far as I know, there isn't a way to get it to tell you the drag of this station, of this, of this method. I can't think of like an easy, clever way to suggest how Trajectories add that. So I you know, haven't complained to them, but that's that's one thing to keep in mind that what it says uh, as your predicted spot for you know, aerodynamic reentry is not going to be a hundred percent accurate because it's estimating for your craft as it is then, not as it's going to be as a little capsule uh, upon reentry. So we're heading back down. You know, G forces are coming down, or oh, they're actually heading back up. I guess now as my vertical speed is increasing, we don't have a ton of velocity left to uh, to burn off. I always find is a funny thing to say considering we're going two kilometers a second. Uh, but, you know, compared to uh, what we were doing when we hit the atmosphere, we don't have much speed left. Now, recently, Shadow Mage himself, uh, I believe he set up the parachutes for this so that they actually behave nicely um, with FAR installed. Uh, prior to that, like, it needed, the hardware needed some settings in there so it actually knew how much drag to give uh, with the chutes deployed. And without that, since I didn't know how to set that up myself, it would just smash into the water at 100 meters per second or more. <sighs> but with the craft as it is here, uh, and has, as he set up the code, it should work nicely. So I'm not saying... you don't get the warning sign with this because it's built in. Um, enable parachute staging, I don't think that's going to do anything. I need to tell it to deploy the chute. So I'll, I usually I always wait till I'm below the speed of sound, so I feel like I'm safe to do that now. Um, but I'll probably wait just a little bit. I know I'm over water, so this will be a, a fairly de uh, fairly accurate representation of how high we are. We're down to about half the speed of sound. Let's see what these shoots do. Hm, nothing. Um, do, do I hit the button? Control from here. I can turn descent mode off, and it'll kind of head back. Turn on all the nice lights that are built in. Hmm. Shoot armed unsafe. Okay, so it believes it is unsafe, and so it's not going to put them out yet. Perhaps until it hits seven and a half, uh, seven and a half kilometers. So fair enough. There we go. Oh, I was accelerating. the The animations are pretty nice. Can't believe uh, I'm, I'm quite impressed that Shadow Mage was able to build all these animations and little parts that pop off and everything into just one part, into one model, but without having to have them separate. Oh, these are the drogue chutes that will slow us down enough for the main chutes to pop out. So 
so what speed does it say it's going to do that at? 1.2 kilometers, okay. So it's really dark because it's you know, landing in, uh, in the night on the water. Let's brighten it up a little bit. I still can't see the surface, so I'm just going to have to go with these numbers. So what does multiplication say? So we're heading 26 meters per second, so 26 times 3.6 is you know almost 100 kilometers an hour. So that'd still be a rough speed to smash into the water. So we definitely want those main chutes to pop out for the health of our astronauts. I think this is, this is all quite nicely optimized just for gameplay, um, where they pop out enough to make sure you're safe and you're not going to smash into the water really hard. Um, if you can practice, the, you know, real parachutes pop out a bit higher because astronauts don't mind kind of floating down for a few minutes, whereas for us, for, you know, for gameplay purposes, we get a little impatient. Oh, there we go. And the mains popped. Semi-deployed. Wobbling a little bit. So it looks like it's going very well. All right, and now we're slowed down. <laughs> and some other uh, previous part, perhaps the cap or something. Fell, below, uh, fell past us. Very nice. So, successful mission. So, the uh, Orion Altair sent off the Earth uh, by the my SLS with the Uber boosters, with the F-1B boosters, uh, has returned successfully with just the little Orion capsule. Well, we should hit the water pretty soon. It looks like it should be approaching 120, 90, 80, 70 just can't see it because it's night. We should see it when the water hits us. There you go. And it does its happy recovery dance. There we go. All right. So thanks for joining me. I hope that was, you know, entertaining or enlightening or, you know, whatever you were hoping to get out of watching those videos. Um, I might start another series soon. You know, leave any comments, you know, like if you liked it. Um, you know, let me know if there's any other specific things you'd like to see recorded. Um, thanks for watching. Goodbye.